I'd next like to move on in my presentation to talk about our work, the, the work that we do to support your work. And that's exactly how we see it. ArcGIS is our essential technology that we continue to evolve. And I'll go deep into what we're doing and have been doing in the last year in that environment. The vision of ArcGIS is to create a complete, comprehensive geospatial platform that supports multiple communities. The GIS community, of course, but also the mapping and location and location analytics communities. And also support geo-enabled systems, which are specialized technologies for specialized workflows. We do this in an open and developer-friendly environment with SaaS and software, and most recently, platform as a service. I'll talk more about that in just a moment. ArcGIS supports three fundamental types of systems, but they're all integrated into one technology. Systems of record for transactional data management, systems of analytics for creating insights into how geography is interconnected and works, systems of engagement through apps and maps that connect populations to the organization's work, communicate, and so on. ArcGIS is an integrated system. It brings many components together and works actually and has been engineered to work as a single system, supporting many kinds of applications and people. It, as a technology, is what is enabling and fueling this geospatial infrastructure pattern. ArcGIS users are increasingly leveraging the cloud. They're extending their system and strengthening their capabilities by deploying in clouds, like uh, the ArcGIS Enterprise, but also leveraging SaaS resources from the cloud, like content or analytics in the cloud, or I'll be talking about a number of these things in a few minutes. Our pattern here is ArcGIS Online. The ArcGIS platform is open and it's interoperable. We support and leverage multiple initiatives to make this happen, supporting, of course, all the good work done by the standards organizations, OGC and others. We also have architected the system to be an open architecture with open APIs and open data so that it can help our users integrate their systems into a broader frame of other IT systems. We have been working during the last year on enhancing capabilities. They're, they're advancing. Over the next few minutes, I'm going to be sharing a bit about each of these different activities that we're, that we're working on. But these are just kind of a preview for the, what's uh, going to be shown in the next couple of days in various workshops. Lots of new innovations, uh, specialized applications uh, in many frames. I'll start this presentation by updating you on ArcGIS's content. ArcGIS content is integrated in part of the fundamental system. And it's really ready to use content. Thousands of layers that cover the Earth and also are curated by us from public sources made available so that they are literally, again, GIS ready. Look at the list on the right. Uh, these are some of the new initiatives to be able to take the NGDA data sets from the US federal government, sometimes called A16, and make them openly available for download and services for your application. And it just goes on. But one of the big ones I want you to notice, the new content that we created in the last year, which is a land cover map for the entire planet. These, these data sets are for global applications, certainly, but also they are of the nature of being very detailed in many geographies that can apply, be applied for your work. Uh, let me go on to this global land cover 2020 data set. This is high resolution imagery, the Sentinel imagery from the European satellite, which has been classified into basic land cover. And this is open data now available to all of you as services or downloads. And we built this in collaboration over the last several years with the National Geographic Society and Impact Observatory, and also Microsoft Corporation and their planetary computer. Powerful, exciting. Well, let me go on to desktop mapping and cartography. Here, we've been making improved tools and improvements to our tools to support advanced workflows 
in the desktop environment of ArcGIS Pro. We've added new things. We've certainly achieved parity with the Arc Map technology of the, of the previous era, but also we have advanced new things, introduced new kinds of cartographic tools for advancing cartographic science. And there'll be lots of sessions on, on cartography here at the conference in the next few days. In the field of interactive web mapping, we have also made a lot of new improvements. And the first word that I chose here is fast because the performance of being able to do interactive mapping has, again, dramatically increased. And that's enabled things like data-driven exploration of maps. Look at the upper left. See, I'm moving back and forth this little um, chart, uh, and we're seeing all of the counties in the United States visualize dynamically as we explore the information. That's a new pattern for maps. It's the idea that mapping is an interactive environment. Some of the improvements are that we introduced a new map viewer for both ArcGIS Online and the enterprise technology. And you can look through the list, you can find your favorite things. Mine happens to be sketching, the ability to sketch on top of a web map and then share it with my colleagues. Instant apps are a brand new thing that were introduced this year. They allow us to quickly transform any web map, 2D or 3D map, into an app. And we support about a dozen of these apps. You can just take your map, associate it with this app, and boom, you've got an app to go. And there's many more coming. For some of you, you'll remember the, the word configurable apps. This is kind of the next gigantic step forward of configurable apps. You can build these independently, but you can also create them right inside of the map viewer. For many of you, dashboards are almost an essential element now. I see them in almost every agency that I go to because they provide dynamic, real-time visualization about any subject. Well, for every subject, dashboards have meaning and have been embraced by our users to be able to provide at-a-glance information. We continue working, and what's coming is a new table visualization and the ability to have dashboards natively implemented on your mobile device. That means that people can look at their little favorite dashboards anywhere, anytime, and on any device. Story maps are, again, one of these enormously popular applications. They're opening up geographic storytelling for all of us. Everybody has a story, and they're telling it like crazy with story maps. Millions of these have been published thousands of new ones introduced every day. My good friend, uh, Jim Fallows, calls this geojournalism, the ability to author a story and make it available uh, dramatically, dynamically, digitally, uh, covering a lot, of, a, lot, a, a lot of populations. The innovations here have been uh, better, simple drawing tools and the ability to collect multiple story maps together into collections so I can publish like a story book for uh, a, for a particular community. These are getting easier, and the, the story map role last year opened up story map telling in a very affordable way to entire enterprises. And we're going to continue on that journey of making this more available and easier to use by everyone. Embedded mapping is an idea that I talked about earlier, the idea of embedding our mapping and our tools inside of other organizations' apps. And this is about embedding ARC maps into other products, like all the Microsoft 365 products or the Autodesk uh, tools for engineers or into the Adobe products or into, into Salesforce and Amazon and SaaS and IBM and others. My sense is that this is going to be continuing to expand your reach, the reach of GIS, bringing easy map making inside of other uh, technologies, well, that, I, think, I think that has the potential of really making transformational impacts. Our work in interactive visual analytics is largely organized in a product we call ArcGIS Insights. And this is a very easy to learn tool that works in both web and desktop environments. It allows people to access lots of different data around their organization and engineer access and then explore the data visually, spatially, and then do analytics and interactive reporting on that data set. Very popular set of tools that are rapidly expanding. 
Speaking about spatial analytics, for many of you, it's the heart and soul of what you do. Uh, it's all about solving problems and advancing science in multiple ways. This year, we've introduced 90 new tools and algorithms. They're shown partly in this visual display. New tools for AI and machine learning and big data analytics, scripting, data engineering, and so on. Again, I invite you to the workshops because very powerful things have been introduced that will change the fundamental methods of certain sorts of workflows dramatically. I'm particularly fond of the AI and machine learning and deep learning activities that are going on. At ESRI, we're beginning to call this GeoAI, and we have very consciously engineered these capabilities directly inside of all of the different parts of the system, into pro, into enterprise, into online, so you can accomplish multiple things within the technologies that you know and work with every day. But we've also integrated this platform technology with uh, open science ecosystem of dozens of other technologies that are also traveling along in the world of GeoAI. These tools are being used rapidly by our users to automate what they're doing and also just approach their problem solving smarter. Look at the examples in the upper right. I'll just call that one because I love it, which is the ability to do feature extraction off of imagery, creating actual feature layers uh, and change layers automatically. Now, imagery and remote sensing, as I mentioned earlier, uh, is becoming very important in the GIS community. And we have implemented a complete library of technology, in fact, a complete system, an integrated system, for doing these four major activities. The management of imagery and its dissemination, the ability to make maps automatically, the ability to visualize and explore information, and also the ability to do analytics. And these little blue lists are just a few of the hundreds of capabilities that actually exist for doing it. But that's some of the work that we've done in the last year. Of this list, my favorite is the idea that we can actually load our imagery up into ArcGIS Online now and host it in a SaaS environment. Now, I'd like to talk about this in a little more detail. Image hosting and analysis in the cloud. This means as an extension to ArcGIS Online, I can actually upload my own imagery into ArcGIS Online. I can do raster analytics in ArcGIS Online or image processing in ArcGIS Online. And I can serve it out as image services, uh, visualization services, integratable directly into the other work that I'm doing. This enables not only a handful of images to be processed in this way, uh, but also massive, massive uh, scalability. Drone mapping is another dimension of what we are doing with imagery. We support two fundamental technologies, site scan, which is cloud processing, and drone to map, which is desktop technology for planning and managing and collecting imagery and then processing it. This is what we are beginning to call reality capture. It is a mission that results in things like point clouds or DSMs or multi-spectral uh, thermal in, uh, emissions, lots of data sets that are directly usable by our users. For some users, they wish to do this at scale. So we introduced late last year a new technology called Sure for ArcGIS. This is about reality capture in an automated, like a factory, the capturing of this data, the processing of this data, and the ability to create 3D data products and, and maps. This is very, very attractive to large mapping agencies or to aerial survey companies who wish to automate and transform how they do digital photogrammetry. I'd like to show you how this works. You can see the textured meshes on the right in the city of Boston. It can now be integrated and enrich 3D systems of record, like the 3D buildings that's shown on the left. Many of you have these 3D systems of record that you're updating uh, feature by feature. But by, able to, by being able to integrate the two together, I can create really a marvelous 3D visualization experience. This is an example in Frankfurt, Germany, where an aerial photography mission was processed simply in a few hours to create this beautiful pictorial description of the city. And I can interact with this, of course, 
It's a beautiful visualization. But what you don't know is behind those, let's call them 3D pictures, are the actual 3D features. So I can interact with the features. I can color them. I can color the mesh. Like in this case with zoning, well, the little video here speaks for itself. You get the idea. I see a new generation of 3D GIS as a result of these meshes being captured and being able to be integrated into our 3D systems. Our work in 3D visualization and analysis is fundamentally advancing GIS. It's not just about meshes, but also we've been working on the integration of game engine technologies to support immersive experiences. We continue working on tools for doing 3D web editing, both of meshes, but also of individual features. We've done extensive work in the integration of BIM models. We started in a great partnership with Autodesk Corporation, and we've extended this technology to include open BIM models or IFC integration. And we're also working actively in the ability to integrate these 3D BIM models right into our feature databases as a, as a long transaction, and lots of other things, like being able to interactively do view sheds or cross sections or elevation profiles of various types. I'd like to share with you particularly the next chapter in our GIS and BIM integration. We're doing this closely with Autodesk Corporation, linking our systems with their systems and workflows. Now, ArcGIS GeoBIM, a new product which will come out in the fall, is able to dynamically link ArcGIS features two documents within the Autodesk Construction Cloud and BIM 360 environment. That means I can point at a feature in a, in a 2D or 3D scene and automatically bring up next to it, the dynamically bring up the document. Now, we have engineered this in such a way that this dynamic relationship can be the platform for creating a whole new class of apps. This will enable new kinds of collaboration bringing the engineering and construction community closer with the GIS community and vice versa. Our 3D capabilities in ArcGIS are integrated across the entire ArcGIS system, and they enrich all types of experiences in the desktop, in the mobile environment, and also on the web. These experiences are part of a larger system, a complete 3D GIS system of record, a kind of living digital twin. Another dimension of our work is integrating real-time visualization and analytics into a GIS. This is about integrating sensors, the IoT, directly into the GIS, and we have two solutions to do that. The one is the GeoEvent server, which is an extension to the actual enterprise software. The other one is a new capability called Velocity, which allows these kinds of functions to occur inside of the ArcGIS online cloud. This is all about ingesting real-time data and visualizing it and analyzing it and bringing it right into dynamic applications of all types. For many of you, data management and editing is the center focus of your work. And here, our activities include continuing our support for all the leading data management technologies in the cloud and on-premises, but also reaching for, forward into the future work integrating ArcGIS with these cloud data warehouses to enrich and do big data kinds of operations. We're continuing our support to advance industry data models, services-based models like parcels and utility networks and so on. And we've also made improvements in the geodatabase and performance and a variety of other things. Finally, we continue to work on improving our editing tools, new QA, QC tools, new integration of 3D features and meshes that I talked about earlier. And moreover, just this steady march of improving performance and scalability and usability all around. In the field, ArcGIS supports a series of field apps for both operations and data collection. The biggest innovation that we introduced last year was the ArcGIS Field Maps app. This actually brought together many 
individual app's capabilities for collecting data, updating data in the field, tracking where you are, and being able to access services-based visualization tools. It also introduced the ability to do markups on top of maps and share them. ArcGIS supports a series of specialized data collection tools like Survey123 and Quick Data Capture. And also, it locationally enables other aspects of field work like with Tracker and Navigator and Workforce. All of these come together around the system to be able to provide operational awareness for people in the office who are tracking their people in the field. App builders are making it easy for our users to build their own apps. This is an environment where there's no code or low code app development. You simply take widgets and build web apps with the web app builder, which has resulted in millions of apps being built. And also the experience builder, which is the next generation of the web app builder, which is more optimized for, for mobile environments and also has better mapping. And for those users who wish to build native mobile apps, we also have a technology known as the App Studio that allows you to build fantastic iOS or Android or Windows environments. And all of these app builders are available to all of our users. The result has been kind of an explosion of custom apps all over the world. ArcGIS supports strong developer capabilities. These are APIs and SDKs for automating and extending ArcGIS on one hand, but also creating whole new apps. Uh, things like the Python API are useful for being able to build scripts and notebooks for automating work. Uh, tools like the Pro add-ins with the Pro SDK and Enterprise SDK allows us to extend basically functionality. In the area of creating apps, our runtime SDKs allow users to create device-specific apps. And you'll see later uh, today the ability to embed these runtime SDKs inside of game engines, which open up a whole interesting world of gaming as it relates to GIS information. Or perhaps our most popular API is the JavaScript API. And this has resulted in millions of web apps. Earlier this year, we introduced a new library of tools, open source APIs like Open Layers, Leaflet, and more. I'd like to take just a moment about the JavaScript mapping API, which is, which is really continuing to advance at, at a very fast rate. Faster performance, data-driven visualization, new tools and widgets and workflows, uh, more 3D capabilities, and especially client-side analytics that you saw in a few examples I shared a few moments ago. ArcGIS Platform is a brand new technology we released earlier this year. This is about developer-focused mapping and location services, and it's del delivered as PaaS. It's delivered in a consumption-based business model, which supports non-GIS developers and also the embedding of location services capabilities from the cloud into enterprise system. I'd like to now shift gears for a moment and talk about the fundamental ArcGIS products. These are the vessels within which all this capability gets realized. As most of you know, ArcGIS is an integrated series of components, servers, desktops, apps, solutions, and so on. Let's start with ArcGIS Pro. ArcGIS Pro is all about advanced mapping, visualization, editing, and analytics. And we've, again, introduced a whole new series of capabilities. But we also listened to your requests and feedback from last year, which said, focus on performance, focus on quality, focus on usability. And we did that, but we also continued our march to add new capabilities, things like floor awareness or big data collections. And again, in the workshops, you'll see a lot of this material uh, exposed. And there's yet again more coming. ArcGIS Pro is, has many extensions. These extensions extend the fundamental capability with a rich analytics and tools for data management and tools for production, mapping, and charting. And again, there'll be specialized workshops on each of these. The second big technology of the family is the ArcGIS Enterprise. And this is about GIS infrastructure for your organization. It's all, all the tools for data management and mapping and, and analytics and collaboration of multiple types. This enterprise technology runs in public and private clouds, of course, and also for on-prem deployments. Lots of new things 
actually occurred here in the last year, some dramatically large advances. But I'll just hit on a couple. You've been asking for better distributed collaboration, like two-way synchronizations between different systems, updating a map in one system and having it oh, send a little updatogram over to another one and automatically update, and many others. What's coming next is our support for enterprise in the cloud and also the integration of our technology to these big data warehouses that I mentioned earlier in my talk. But I'd like to focus especially on a huge advancement which happened with this latest release, which is Kubernetes support. ArcGIS on Kubernetes is the implementation of ArcGIS in a cloud native architecture. And for some of you, you'll be enormously interested in this when I tell you about it. Others will continue using Linux or Windows for the implementation. But cloud native architecture means that we take a piece of software like enterprise and we divide it up into a series of microservices. These are the little things that the software does. And you can deploy these on different computers within the, over cloud, within the overall cloud environment. This means I can really scale out the technology to deal with very large number of users or very high amounts of computation. Uh, this is not for everyone, but it is for organizations who are using Kubernetes and want to take advantage of the scalability. It's supported on AWS and on Azure, and also for users that use the IBM Red Hat OpenShift environment. The third capability or part of the ArcGIS system is the ArcGIS Online environment. And this is a massive global system of, for mapping and analytics, all in a SaaS environment. There are actually over 10 million users now that subscribe to this, and they're making millions and millions of data sets available for use by others. Trillions of maps actually get made out of this environment. And uh, we're continuing to work hard on many fronts. I've already covered a lot of the new and improvements uh, improved uh, uh, capabilities in this system, like the new map viewer and charting and, uh, and a bunch of others. Again, I invite you to the workshops here because you'll be able to be engaged and share what you're thinking about our work and also share uh, your feedback on our plans going forward. The ArcGIS Online environment has a number of extensions. One of my favorites I've already talked about is ArcGIS Hub. This is about supporting engagements with other uh, citizens or with other organizations. Organization to organization collaboration is supported with these tools. And I'll just underline this point that it's about organizing things. It's about organizing initiatives in an organization for collaboration or whatever. It's about organizing people. And it's also about organizing activities. Um, lots of neat workshops on this environment as well. ArcGIS solutions are a different part, a different kind of product. They lay on top of the other products. They're industry-specific maps and apps that are pre-configured. You simply download them and implement them into your systems, and you're ready to go for a whole new series of applications. They're, they're extensive. They're transforming local governments quickly. We use this kind of pattern for the COVID uh, response where people were setting up dashboards very quickly, but in emergency response and utilities and so on, they're very easy now to deploy and they're also completely supported just like our other software products. And the best part for many of you will be that uh, they are free. They're freely disseminated and they're helping organizations really realize huge value right away. Next, I'd like to take a few minutes and describe Esri's geo-enable systems. These are about supporting with individual products, focused workflows for indoors, for urban planning, for landscape planning, for business analysis, and most recently, emergency management and response. I'll start with indoors. This is a GIS for space and building management. It visualizes and analyzes all aspects of a building. It includes tools for being able to do data management about a building, and then organize and manage spaces, operations, and it even includes a series of apps for navigating inside of a building with indoor positioning technology. This is changing the way people see buildings. They're able to manage it more efficiently and more effectively. 
ArcGIS Urban is a 3D scenario planning system for both cities and regions. It's about geo design in cities where you bring the data together, you do analytics like suitability analysis, and then interactively do scenario planning and quickly evaluate these alternative scenarios. This is exactly intuitively what uh, you would imagine a city planner should do. Quickly, interactively, and with stakeholder engagement, evaluate technically different alternatives on uh, to create a better future. We've been doing lots of new enhancements here. You can glance through this list. My favorite one is to be able to sketch buildings easily into the environment of urban so that I can quickly evaluate them. Similar to urban, the ArcGIS GeoPlanner is about geo design for landscapes, and it follows a very similar pattern. You bring the data together, you do scenario planning, visualize and analyze the impacts of different landscape plans. Here I'm talking about like designing green infrastructure or being able to achieve the great goals of 30 by 30, saving 30% 30 of the open space by year 2030. And I invite you again to go to these workshops. They're a lot of fun and you'll learn a lot about being able to create a future which is more sustainable. ArcGIS Business Analyst is location-based market analysis and analytics. It comes with a huge library of geographic information and then has many tools for doing things like site suitability analysis, being able to do market research and uh, infographics about geography. It's a huge benefit for businesses like Starbucks and Nike and, and Walgreens and, and hundreds and hundreds of others like it. But it's also increasingly being used by government to be able to do economic evaluation and attract businesses to a community. ArcGIS Mission is a command and control system for tactical operations. What that means is like a fire or a search and rescue effort or a disaster response. It likewise is, brings the data together in a server environment and allows users to plan and execute and then see firsthand situation awareness of what's going on in the field. It consists of a series of applications, both for managers of an operation, but also the first responders out in the field who are messaging back with peer-to-peer -peer communication among themselves and with the headquarters office. Very fun technology. Well, some of you are asking what's next for, for ESRI technology. And through the workshops, through the various sessions, you'll be hearing about what we're working on now. As some of you know, we have several thousand people in our R&D and development activities, and they are all very active uh, in these sorts of topics. And they're so anxious not only to support you and please you, but also to hear your feedback about how we're doing in these areas. It helps them a lot, so please speak out and get engaged with them. We continue our incremental releases. This year, we're naming them the ArcGIS 2021 release with a series of dot releases for Pro and Enterprise. And we'll follow that, that nomenclature going into the future. We're definitely continuously improving our SaaS offerings and, uh, and actually improving quality and performance in addition to these basic fundamental research efforts.